everybody welcome to professor orthodontics your online classroom to understanding orthodontics in simpler terms today's presentation will be dealing with patient instructions to be given when we hand over a orthodontic retainer an orthodontic retainer although i am i'll be mentioning orthodontic retainer throughout the presentation but uh, all these instructions not only apply to orthodontic retainers, but they also apply to any other removable orthodontic appliance. So be it a space closure appliance or an expansion plate, all orthodontic appliances that are removable, similar, same instructions can be given to the patients because they are made of basically the same material and the architecture of the uh, removable plate is more or less similar. Although the wire components may differ here and there, but then the basic, the chemical structure, it contains the same acrylic, the same base plate chemically. So the maintenance and hygiene instructions, they are all common. So just keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, the abbreviation OA are used here and there once in a while. So OA refers to removal orthotic appliances. So Let's get started. Now there are there is no there is no limitation to the colors and the designs of removable orthodontic retainers and even removable orthodontic appliances. They come in all colors and all styles, right? It depends on uh, only the child's uh, uh, child's favorite color. It depends on uh, what's his favorite uh, cartoon and you know uh, there is just no limitation there's a variety of colors and designs and decorations that can be incorporated within a removable orthodontic plate or retainer but that's not it that's just not it because what is the point of decorating and designing the orthodontic retainer to the child's fantasy if the child doesn't wear it, if the child doesn't use it. So uh, not only just a child, even if an adult is not wearing the retainer or the authentic appliance, what is the use of decorating it? So when we hand over the retainer to the patient, it's very important that we educate them and we tell them how to exactly wear it, how to maintain it, how to clean it what emergencies can come up. So this presentation is less related to uh, theory of or the mechanics of orthodontics and it's more related to patient and orthodontics, uh, orthodontist uh, com uh, communication. Because sometimes what happens is despite uh, uh, despite being a basic patient instruction, patient kind of forgets the instructions. So I'd advise you to write down instructions. And if you if you don't have the time to write down instructions, maybe you can record the instruction passed down to the patient because you know it's human nature to you know not completely pay attention. Maybe you are trying to explain all the instructions to the patient and the patient is busy. Uh, uh, the patient is just uh, uh, busy thinking about, okay, how long am I supposed to wear this retainer? You know? So it's always better if you write down the instruction and hand over to the patient. All right. So let's get started to the basic of the instructions now. The first and foremost thing is how to wear the retainer. Um, the first thing that you should tell your patient is use both the hands to wear the retainers and the, uh, the thumb and the index finger can be used, okay? So bilaterally, both left and right hand, the thumb and the index finger should be holding the bridge of the Adam's clasp or any clasp, whichever clasp you're using, okay? It should be holding the clasp area and then positioning it bilaterally into the mouth, okay? And then you press it upwards, okay? Now, there are some mistakes that commonly take place. Most patients, what they do is they position the retainer by holding the front wire or basically the labial wire or any other anterior wire. So we have to advise them to not to use and not to uh, position the removable plate or retainer by holding the front wires because front wires are delicate and if they incorporate bends, your teeth will move in 
a wrong direction and we'll have to repeat orthodontic treatment and nobody wants that right so i really had to struggle to find a decent picture that could show that so these are the pictures that could come close to it in the above picture the child is right yes you should use both the hands in wearing the retainer but then he's using the front wire to position the retainer which is not not exactly right so uh, in the lower picture yes the child is holding it in the adam's clasp region which is correct but then she, she's using both the left and the right hands uh, she's using only one hand so i would recommend that you hold the retainer in the adam's clasp region use both left and right hand and give a nice push once the plate is in position in the mouth give a nice upward push like in this picture you'll see so here you can see the model after positioning it in the mouth she's giving it a upward push and when she's pushing she's not pushing the front wire that is the label bow she's pushing the plate the plastic she's pushing the plastic which is inside she's pushing it upwards so once you do that the plate immediately clicks on your teeth and clasps your teeth in place you'll hear a click yeah you hear a click the moment that happens that means your plate is fitting there are other don'ts which happen when the patient wear the retainer sometimes some kids and even some adults do that so they have a tendency to not wear the retainers with their hands and simply bite onto it so when they bite on the plate they think that the pressure of the lower teeth is beautifully positioning the plate on the upper teeth or vice versa maybe the pressure of the upper teeth is positioning the plate on the lower teeth the retainer on the lower teeth not really every time they bite on the plate they think that yes the appliance is fitting yes it is fitting but then every time you do that every time that happens there is stress incorporating in the wires and in the plastic that is the base plate these will result in stress points and within a few days or over a period of few weeks the the retainer or the orthotic appliance will break in these same areas so there is a tendency of wire usually getting wire usually breaking on certain stress points it usually correlates with the places where the patient bites onto the retainers or removable appliance so every time you do that you are increasing the chance of breaking your retainer keep that in mind so here we can see a clear retainer and the instructions will still remain the same if it's a clear retainer that you're using not the wire type of retainer then make sure you use both the hands position the back area of your uh, of your retainer clear retainer first and then position the front area again don't try to do it with one hand again don't try to do it with the front teeth first try to do it bilaterally with both the hands and position in the back region first now we come to how you clean the retainers think of retainers as an extension of your oral cavity so every time you get up in the morning you brush your teeth you you floss your teeth just the same way you have to brush your retainers okay now why is it because the saliva contains some debris of remaining food particles okay it also it also gets lodged in the retainers how it gets lodged in the teeth and every time that happens it increases okay the deposition of bacteria and plaque on your retainers okay so you see um creamy or a brown color hard deposits that eventually form a layer it it looks very dirty it looks it does not look good let let me say that okay so those deposits accumulate over time if you do not maintain your retainer so the instruction that we can give to the patient is that brush your teeth twice a day and in fact even during lunch brush your teeth every time you eat food and the way you brush your teeth is the same way brush your retainers also it doesn't matter which retainer you're using you're using the wire retainer or you're using clear retainer you have to brush it okay because what happens is imagine you have brushed your teeth and the retainers 
well, you didn't care for it. Basically, the retainer still contains the old food, old saliva, when you kept it aside. And after cleaning your teeth, you're wearing that old saliva, which contains floating debris of old food and bacteria, and then you place them on your teeth. What's the point of brushing your teeth if you're doing that? Okay, so what happens is you will have bad smell coming from your mouth. You may not realize it, but your friends, your colleagues, they will notice that, you know, you're stinking. Your mouth is stinking. So, yeah, there's too much of bacterial growth taking place. There's increase in chances of dental cavities. So don't do that. Okay, take more care. How do you maintain the retainers? You have to brush the retainer the way you brush your teeth. So you can do one thing. You can uh, keep a special toothbrush only to clean your retainers. Okay. Just toothbrush will be enough. Okay. So if you want to get rid of that bad odor that bothers you a lot, then make sure that, you know, you don't use anything strong. In the sense, you can use a uh, mild hand soap. You can use a mild hand soap and hand wash uh, liquid and uh, clean it. Yeah, so the physical brushing of the retainer inside and outside is more important. That also includes the wire. Okay, that's more important than using any uh, fancy liquid or a cleaning solution for the retainer because the mechanical action will be the main main source or main method of removing the debris and bacteria that's on your retainer okay so what you need is a toothbrush and you can use a safe and a mild hand soap just a little enough to you know foam and brush all over particularly on the inside and then on the outside I would not advise you to use toothpaste because toothpaste contains fine abrasive particles. So what do abrasives do? Abrasives are like uh, fine particles, materials that have a scrubbing action. Okay, it's so it's it's like a sandpaper. Okay, so toothpaste do contain that and it's okay if we use it on our teeth, but then uh, because enamel is the strongest substance in our own body, right? We know that. So enamel can sustain that. So these abrasives are not that harmful on our teeth because our enamel is very strong. But the same thing cannot be applied on orthotic retainers or removable appliances because they are just made of plastic or something like plastic so what happens is you end up with uh, you end up scraping or scratching the surfaces of the retainer that will result in uh, removal of the polished layer and uh, once the polished layer is removed it attracts more plaque so maintaining it will become more difficult over time it will ac accumulate more of plaque more of tartar more of food debris okay so avoid using toothpaste just stick to toothbrush a good toothbrush and use a mild hand soap uh, and you can also use mouthwash okay and i would say mouthwash would be more safer so use a little bit of mouthwash alcohol free mouthwash and because remember that your retainer contains a type of plastic and your alcohol may react with the plastic so we don't want that so alcohol free mouthwash that will give you a you know a fresh or a minty uh, 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 taste so use a little of that and you can clean it there are some um, there are some retainer cleaning tablets available in the market i will not advise you to use that i don't recommend it because after all they are chemicals if say over a period of time maybe you're using a retainer for a year or eight months and um, you see that some thick and uh, uh, stubborn deposits accumulate on your retainer that look yellowish or brownish and no matter what you do no matter how much you brush they do not go away then in that case yes that first of all is an indicator that you have not been brushing your retainers well okay second indicator uh, second thing is that immediate management okay yes you have to remove them so instead of using chemicals you can do one thing you can try two methods one method is simply soak it 
in a bowl of uh, water and regular water tap water normal temperature water not warm water okay so regular tap water regular temperature normal temperature tap water and soak it and basically uh, add a few drops of mouthwash to it okay let it soak it and then try to brush it off if you soak it maybe you know it it, it will come off the 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 tartar accumulation will come off and another method if it's a really stubborn deposit on your retainer then you can just add uh, a little bit of baking baking soda in in your bowl and uh, let it soak for 20 or 30 minutes basically it uh, effervescence and uh, that result in loosening of the uh, particles and try brushing it after that after soaking it in the uh, in the water containing baking soda okay so just uh, make sure you close it close the lid or else you lose all the uh, mechanical action of baking soda just close the lid let it soak for 20 minutes um, and then try brushing it out all right avoid chemicals i would recommend you to stay away from them because it's okay when you know people who wear dentures use these chemicals because they are wearing the dentures when they are eating the food and it's difficult to keep them clean okay but it's not the same with with orthodontic retainers or removable orthodontic appliance when you're using a retainer and orthodontic appliance you have to remove them okay so there is uh, you know it, it, maintaining the retainer is not that difficult but maintaining a denture is so it's all right if the people using dentures use it because it's difficult to maintain maintain a, a, a artificial teeth which is being used actively every day to eat food but it's definitely not uh, difficult to maintain a retainer to stay away from stay away from retainers uh, as much as you can okay so how often do you brush it you brush it in the morning like you brush your teeth you brush it at night like you brush your teeth you also brush it at lunch time okay if say you are in a place where you cannot brush it maybe you are at some some uh, a conference or something like that at least you have to wash it rinse it and then wear it same applies to your teeth rinse your mouth after having your meal after having your snack and then wear the retainer don't do that without rinsing your mouth and without rinsing the plate okay now um uh, this basically relates to some uh, accidents that can happen. Basically, uh, some patients try to overclean their retainers, and they end up. Um, some of them end up cleaning it with um, hot water, and this basically is made of. This retainer is made of something like a plastic. So, what happens when you put plastic in something hot, some hot water, or you? keep it close to flame it melts away it warps and distorts so once you expose it to hot water or uh, sometimes even uh, uh, you try to keep it close to something hot maybe a hot uh, utensil yeah it can damage the retainer okay so keep it away from anything warm anything hot okay and do not boil the retainer yes boiling is a method of sanitation yes it is but everything cannot be boiled and that includes your retainer okay do not boil the retainer do not use hot water to clean the retainer some people use uh, um, uh, regular disinfectants uh, that are available in the market no stay away do not use detol on your retainer do not use any chemical on your retainer it will harm the retainer and it will harm you okay how do you store the retainers well the there are n number of options available these days so there are special retainer cases which come in different colors and different patterns okay you can use just any any small case any small box uh, i always tell my patients if it's not on your teeth it's in the box okay so if it's not on your teeth the retainer should be straight going to your retainer case okay keep it in the box hmm? and by doing that you can avoid half the damages that can happen to your retainers um, 
Make sure that retainer case is big enough to hold your retainer or orthodontic appliance. It should be just big enough to, to loosely keep your retainer in place. You can also uh, add, if you're say uh, keeping it for a little longer time in, in uh, uh, outside your mouth, then you can add some water, again, room temperature, tap water to it and close it, okay? Always, always keep it in the retainer. Do not keep the retainer or orthotic appliances in your pocket or in a handkerchief. Most people end up either breaking the retainer like that or they end up throwing the retainer along with the, with the, uh, with the tissue paper. So please don't do that. Now, at times, uh, as I told you, uh, the patients come up with bro broken appliances, broken retainers nothing can be done to save that okay if your retainer is broken remove it keep it aside and immediately book an appointment with your orthodontist because your teeth can move in a matter of one or two days also when one or two days you can start seeing changes at least your orthodontist will start seeing changes if you don't wear the retainers so you don't want to repeat your orthodontic treatment so please do not break your retainers and if you end up breaking your retainers accidentally Book an appointment with your orthodontist immediately. And uh, in the picture, you can see the, the plastic part or the base plate part is broken near the wire. And this is one of the examples wherein, you know, uh, the patient must have uh, bit on the, on the retainer and to position it, okay? So it cannot be done. It cannot repair it. Okay. So this is one possibility. Another possibility is uh, maybe the patient stepped on the retainers. When people uh, don't keep the retainer back in the retainer box, most of the accidents happen during that time. So if it's not in your uh, on your teeth, it should go in the box, okay? And if it's not in the box, this can happen. You may end up stepping on the retainer, you may end up sitting on the retainer, yeah? All sorts of things happen and results in breakage. You cannot repair it. You have to get a new one made. Yeah. So be careful. And another possibility is when you clean the retainers. So try to clean the retainers only uh, over a, a bathroom sink or a kitchen sink. Try to clean your retainer preferably in a bathroom sink and basically something underneath. Don't uh, don't start brushing onto your retainers in an uh, open place. So if you do not have a uh, have a bathroom sink accessible at that point, at least use a designated uh, bowl which is only for this purpose. You know, keep a bowl in your house only for this purpose. Say you are in a place where you do not have a access to a, a, a wash wash basin or a sink, then use a bowl which is you know only for your retainers and clean your retainers above the bowl yeah so that if the retainer slips from your hand and it drops it doesn't drop on the floor and crack instead it falls into your bowl so that you can avoid these breakages just the same way even the wires can break and this is one of the examples wherein you know biting force on the retainer results in stress incorporation and results in fracture okay so again no repair can be done book an appointment get a new one made so how long does a retainer last? Well, it depends on how well you take care of it. If it's a wire retainer, it is it is sturdy enough. Although it is made of plastic and wire, it is still sturdy. So if you take good care of it, it can last at least for a year. At least for a year. Okay. But then the clear retainers, which look like Invisalign, which are given to the patient at the end of Invisalign or other situations, those retainers are very fragile. You can imagine. You can see your teeth through them and they are not almost not visible so how thin and delicate that material must be so those retainers may not last one year okay they have uh, patients have to be more careful when they are wearing and using the clear retainers because they are very very delicate okay the instructions remain the same for both the wire retainers the holly retainer that is and the clear retainers okay but yeah you have to take care of it, whether it's this type or that type. Now, how many days are you supposed to wear the retainer? The duration of wear of retainers, it varies from patient to patient, but I would recommend that at least wear the retainer for one year. One year, 
full time like morning and day and night wear it all the time and after that you can wear the retainer lifetime only for night wear uh, and why is it so why you have to wear the retainers for lifetime well this we have discussed in our last presentation which we, which was on retention and retainers so i'll not get into that okay so that is for retainers wear of uh, aware of minimum 12 months and we know that if we do not wear the retainers the teeth will try to go back in their old position before the treatment and we don't want that some people fail at uh, fail to wear the retainers and end up you know repeating the entire orthodontic treatment again so yeah that's definitely not what we want that's definitely not what the patient wants so we have to keep repeating these things and keep educating the patient and reminding the patient the importance of wearing the retainers so remember minimum of 12 months of full time wear followed by night time wear of retainers for lifetime okay that's your uh, retention uh, a retainer schedule as far as other removable orthotic appliances are concerned if it is not for retention that means you're wearing the retainers for active orthotic tooth movement obviously the until the tooth movement is complete you have to wear the orthotic removable appliance and uh, the duration of the treatment will keep prolonging if you do not cooperate so if you cooperate properly if you cooperate well then we can complete the treatment on time it also depends on the case complication how um, irregular are your teeth how many complications are involved in your straightening of your teeth that also decides for how many days you need to wear your orthotic appliance so that's it guys i hope you found this patient instruction presentation useful and uh, yeah if you like this presentation please like share and subscribe and if you think your patients can benefit from presentation feel free to share it with them okay so until next time keep learning